What's up everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this brand new series, you will learn how to use masks in Pygame in order to achieve pixel perfect collision. The series shouldn't be too long and we should be done in two videos. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into our code. As far as my editor is concerned, I'll be using for all these videos the PyCharm offline editor. But if you are more comfortable using idle or some other editor, you can go ahead and use them. Just make sure that you know all your files are within the same folder and as you can see, even before I've begun, I've got these three files within the same folder slash directory and those are these images which you can see right here. I drew all of them and you can find all of them linked below uh, in the description in the form of a Google Drive attachment. So what I would recommend you to do is to go ahead and download all of them, put them in the same folder and then come right back. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that and I'm going to start off by importing Pygame and in case you're having trouble with this statement itself, I'll leave a card for you here to check out the first video in my Pygame series where I deal with Pygame's installation and all of that. So in addition to just importing Pygame, I'll say import Pygame as P so that um, whenever I'm saying Pygame dot something, I can just say P dot something instead and the you know usual line of code once we start is a P dot in it. Okay, there we go. And next I'm going to set up the Pygame window. So Pygame or p.display.set mode. And here within another tuple, you just type in the values of the width and height. So for this, I'm going to set up the width to be, I don't know, maybe 800 and the, um, and the height to be maybe 500. I'm going to go ahead with this. Maybe I'll change it later on. Okay, now, now we can set up the caption and I'm going to say p.display.set caption. And uh, the caption is going to be like the text you see on top of the window. For me, I'm going to go ahead with pixel perfect collision. So it just seems nice. And um, once you're done with the caption, now I'm going to set up the FPS of this. And all the constants are typically, you know, just um, the variables are just going to be all capital letters. Uh, not really a rule or anything. It's just done as convention. So for this, I'm going to set up an FPS of 100, which may seem like a strange FPS but that's what I'm going to set it up as. Now we can set up the clock, which is going to be like this clock. Um, clock is equal to, um, not CLOK, CLOCK is equal to um, pygame.time.clock. Okay, and uh, this is pretty much what you need initially. And when you have your while loop, and I'm going to set up a Boolean uh, variable called run to uh, regulate the while loop. So run is equal to, uh, run is equal to true. And I'm going to say while run, um, while run and here I'm going to have the first one as you know that um, that clock statement which is going to be clock uh, dot tick and within the brackets we just put the FPS inside. All right there we go and now I'm going to set up that event so for um, event in pygame dot event dot get okay this is going to be uh, the way you set this up and uh, we're going to say if if event dot type is equal equal to is equal equal to p dot quit okay and this is going to be that close button on top of you know the window and if this is the case then what i'll be doing is just setting run to be false so we'll just exit the statement basically oops uh, run is equal to false and yep this is going to be how we need it and well this is going to be um you know this is really just going to be the basic outline of the code and when you do run this program, oops, I accidentally ran a wrong program. So when I do run this program, so I'm going to right click and click run. Um, this window may take a bit of time to pop up, but we just have this essentially. And when we close it, it goes out. So perfect, nothing fancy, but it still works. Okay, now I'm going to make a couple of changes within the code and I'm going to start off by setting this up as a variable. And if you don't have this as a variable, you really won't have anything to, you know, put stuff on. So it's important you have a variable set up to be equals to that particular window. Okay, so once you're done with that, I'm gonna set up a class right here. And this class is going to be called, um, I'm gonna call it class star, okay? Star, and it's not gonna inherit from anywhere, so I'm just gonna type an object inside it. Now the def init function is gonna be fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna say um, self, and I'm just gonna say, um, uh, I'm just going to say self dot image. So just image on top here in the parameters. And I'm going to say self dot image is equal to image. 
then I'm going to set up two more parameters, which is going to be X and Y. So, you know, the standard parameters within, you know, your class in it for sprites. And uh, this one is going to be self.x is equal to x. And we're going to say self.y is equal to y. Oops, I'm not entirely sure what I did there. Self.y is equal to y. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be all you need within this init function. And uh, now the next function is going to be called the draw function, which is um, fairly straightforward. So def draw. And uh, what I'm going to do within this is say um, win.blit. And within this, I'm going to put self.image and the coordinates are going to be x comma y. So I'm going to say x comma y. And um, you could just type in self.x and self.y as well. Uh, I'm actually going to do that. But uh, you could do this without even having a self.x and self.y parameter. I'm just going to go ahead and put them in. Self.x comma self.y. Perfect. So that is going to be our star class. Really simple class. And the next one, I'm actually just not going to have a class for the obstacle because it's just too simple. So what I'm going to do right away here is, okay, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, what I'm going to do here is to just start off by importing the obstacle. So I'm going to say obstacle is equal to p.image.load. And I'm going to put in um, the name of the uh, the name of the image in my case obstacle.png okay that is going to be our image and similarly uh, right here or I'm actually going to do it down here uh, I'm going to say star image star underscore image is equal to um, p dot image dot load and I'm going to put in the image as um, Actually, let me call this green star image and red star image so that I have two distinct images. So green um, underscore star underscore image is equal to green star dot PNG. So green star dot PNG. And the other one is going to be the red star image. So I'm going to say red star image is going to be the red star dot PNG. Okay. So this is going to be it. So these, uh, these things will have our images set up. And um, now it's time to set up an object of the star class. So I'm going to say star is equal to um, star. And I'm going to follow that up by typing in the coordinates, uh, not coordinates, typing in the parameters. So X is going to be, I'm just going to give it 100 for now. Y is going to be, let's just say 100 as well. Then our, um, then our image is going to be, let me go ahead with green star image, okay? So essentially the way this is going to work is whenever we're touching the obstacle with our star, we're going to have a, the red star image show up. And if we're not touching the um, obstacle, then we'll have the green star show up. So that's going to be how it works. And that's fairly simple in my opinion. Now I'm going to resize all these images. So I'm going to do it after each image. So I'm going to say p.obstacle, I'm sorry, p.obstacle um, is equal to p.transform.scale. Um, oops obstacle is equal to p dot transform dot scale and this is going to shrink down or enlarge the image based on the values we give it so this is going to be what image are we doing that's going to be obstacle and the coordinates are going to be and okay i'm typing pretty bad today so the coordinates are going to be 400 and 200 and by coordinates i really meant the width and height values okay so now that you have this you can do the same thing in the green star so um, I'm actually just going to rename them to be green star instead of green star image and red star instead of red star image. I think it's just a whole lot simpler this way. Okay, there we go. And um, here I'm going to say green star, green star is equal to p dot transform dot scale. And once again, we'll just type in the surface in this case, the image itself green star, and I'm going to resize it to 75. 75 that's going to be the resizing okay and instead of um instead of okay i'm pretty sure there are some parameter mistakes here yeah that is the mistake so instead of you know just um typing this whole thing once again i'll copy and paste this here and i'll rename this red star and i'll also call this red star okay this is going to be it so this is all our image resizings and what i'm going to do after this here within our main loop is to um is to just blip those things on the screen. So I'm gonna say win.fill first and fill the screen with a black color. So black is going to be zero, 
comma zero comma zero in the RBG scale. And after this, win dot blit, uh, win dot blit, we'll be blitting in the, uh, we'll be blitting in the obstacle. So win, okay, now win blit, win dot blit, and obstacle. And we're going to blit it at a coordinate of OX and OY. And I know we haven't set up OX and OY yet, which we will do in a second. But before that, I will also say win dot blit. Uh, not win dot blit actually, I'm just going to say star dot draw. Since stars, you know, an object. So star dot draw. And yep, just update the screen. So p dot display dot update. Okay, there we go. And let's just set up OX and OY now. I'm going to say OX, OX is equal to 100 and OY is equal to, let's go ahead with um, 200. So just some random values I picked in and let's run our code. So I'm going to click run and okay, we have an error right here and yeah, I didn't say p.transform.scale, I just said p.transform, which is kind of silly. So p.transform.scale, okay, there we go. Now let's click run once again and boom, you see that we have, you know, this guy, the star set up with the obstacle on the screen and yep, obviously we don't have anything working yet, but this is going to be the setup for the next video where we'll actually be dealing with masks and all of that fun stuff for pixel perfect collision. And that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.